Well, you guys, we all know that Windows 10 end of life is two weeks and 10 hours away, and that's the 14th of October 2025. Now, I wanted to make this video to give you all the information that is updated to this day so we know exactly what to do. So here we have a machine that is on a local account. We haven't activated this system. I am in the UK, which is the United Kingdom, and I'm going to go through and give you all the information and show you how you can opt in or enroll in the ESU program. And I'm going to try and give you as much information as I can in this video. So it's all in one video. So first off, when you open up the Windows Update, you should now see Windows 10 support ends in October 2025. Enroll in the Extended Security Updates program to keep your system and device safe and secure. You can see right here, you can enroll right now. If you're not seeing this, then you've not fully updated to Windows 10's latest version, 22H2, or you've made changes to your operating system that is stopping you from enrolling. You can check the hardware requirements. This is also important if you're thinking about upgrading to Windows 11 on your computer. It's important to see whether your PC meets the system requirements that Microsoft have in place. You can use the PC Health Check tool to check your PC to see if it's eligible for a free upgrade to Windows 11. Now remember, when you upgrade to Windows 11, your activation will carry over with it. So you will be activated on Windows 11 if you roll out an upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 on a supported PC. So we're not talking about unsupported hardware here. You can do it on unsupported hardware, but we're talking about supported hardware at this stage. If all of this information on the screen right here is a little bit alien to you because you don't understand uh, what it means, you can download the PC Health Check app. This was going to allow you to scan your PC and it will give you an idea of whether your PC is supported or not for Windows 11. So what you can do here is go through, check mark the app here, click next. This is a Microsoft app, so it is safe to use and you can open this app up and it's going to give you the information about your PC. So all you need to do here now is click check now and you can see that it's telling me that TPM 2.0 must be supported and enabled on this PC. Now if it's yellow like this it doesn't necessarily mean your PC doesn't have TPM 2.0. It might mean that you have to enable it in the BIOS and you can go ahead and check. But you can check the motherboard manufacturer's website to make sure all of your system does meet the Windows 11 requirements. It's telling me it's just TPM 2.0, and I do know that TPM 2.0 is eligible on this system, so I can roll out an upgrade on this system if I wanted to. If you choose to stay with Windows 10, you get an option to stay on Windows 10 for another year if you're using the standard Windows 10 Home or Pro editions. Now we'll go through the enrollment process in a second. I just want to point out for people that are looking to upgrade to Windows 11 with unsupported hardware, you need to make sure your PC is not that old where it doesn't support SSE 4.2. It should say SSE 4.2 here. If it isn't listed there and your CPU is super old, then it's not going to work with Windows 11 no matter what you do because the pop count uh, that Microsoft have in place which is the instructions that it has in place to stop it from upgrading to Windows 11. If it is there, then you can upgrade to Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. The next thing you need to do is make sure Windows 11 is fully updated to 22H2 and it has all of the security updates and patches that were available for it. All the restrictions have to be removed, all the tweaks that you've done to block Windows updates, it might be stopping this Windows 10 support ends on October 2025 uh, coming down. And this means you're not going to see the enrollment part. If you've done all of this and you've run tools like Chris Titus Text Tool or something like that and paused it, you might not see this and you might want to fix that. And if you can't fix it, do a repair install on the system and hopefully you'll get this option available to you at this stage because you've got two weeks and 10 hours basically at the time of making this video to start thinking about enrolling. Now, if you enroll, you can enroll at any time. But remember, when you enroll, you do not get a year from the time you enroll. It's from the time of end of life of that operating system. 
and that's when it is. So if you come back to enrol three months later, you will be already three months into your year's uh, extended security updates. Now, make sure you've got get the latest updates as soon as they are available, checkmark there, and also make sure you're signed in. So you can see I'm on a local account right now, and I have not activated this version of Windows. Previously, people were saying, or Microsoft was saying that you need to have an activated version of Windows. But what we're going to do here is enroll this system. Now, I live in the UK. That means we're not in the European Union, which is the EEA. We're not in that area. But people are saying that if you live in the UK, you don't get this privilege. But I'm going to show you that right here, we should be able to opt into this for free. We won't have to sync any information. We won't have to do any of that stuff like you have to do if you live outside the EEA. We get the option to opt in for free now because Microsoft have changed the rules. Now, if you live outside the EEA, then you're going to have to meet one of the free requirements that was there before, i.e. using a thousand reward points that you have on your Microsoft account, either pay $30 to enroll or you have to sync your PC to get a free uh, enrollment, but you will need to sign into a Microsoft account to do that. So you're going to have to sign into a Microsoft account regardless of whether you're in the EEA or whether you're outside of it. It's just we don't have to use our Microsoft reward points. We don't have to pay $30 and we don't have to sync our PC. We just have to sign into a Microsoft account. Now, you're going to get two choices, fingerprint, face, or PIN, or security key, or you can approve requests via your Microsoft app. I'm going to do that method right here, and you can see extended security updates right here, no extra cost. I'm living in the UK. Now, as previously thought, if you lived in the UK, you would still have to use one of the other methods, which is either pay $30, use your 1,000 reward points, or sync your PC. But you can see right here, I am having the option to extend my security updates for free and it's probably thinking that i'm in the eea and it's allowed me to continue to add this device uh, using this method so that's good news for uk guys who thought that we would be outside of the eea and we would have to use one of the other methods so we do get that option for free and this device will now get extended security updates through october 13th 2026 and you can see you should see your PCs now enrolled to get extended security updates we can now click done and we're pretty much done now like I said if you live in the EEA uh, then basically you're going to be able to get this option for free like so that means we didn't have to sync our PC settings and all our information to Microsoft it means we didn't have to pay $30 and it also means we didn't have to use 1,000 reward points in our Microsoft account to be able to opt into this. To enroll in the ESU program, we have to sign into a Microsoft account. Everyone has to sign into a Microsoft account, regardless of where you are in the world. If you live outside of the EEA, you're going to have to use one of them other free options. $30, 1,000 reward points, or you're going to have to sync your PC settings and get it for free. That's the only way. You can see in the UK and people that live in the EEA, we don't have to pay. We don't have to use a thousand reward points or sync our PC information. We just sign in. Now, previously, it was thought that you have to activate version of Windows. You have to have an activated version of Windows to do this. And it looks like you don't because we're not activated here and we can still enroll. Now, I am, I am still signed into my Microsoft account. And you can now sign out of your Microsoft account. But there's a catch. You are going to have to sign into your Microsoft account every 60 days to continue to get the ESU, which is your extended security updates. Microsoft have recently stated that you will need to do this. Otherwise, your extended security updates will just stop working. We'll have to find out whether this is true further down the line. But this was said by Microsoft themselves. So yes, you can stop signing in to your Microsoft account like I just showed you right here, and we are now signed out and we're in a local account. But according to Microsoft, you will need to sign in to your Microsoft account within 60 days to continue to get the ESU program or you'll be opted out. So we're going to restart the PC. Now we're on a local account here. 
we're going to restart the PC and get back to the desktop. And what we're going to do right here is we're going to go down to the start button and go to Windows Updates. And I'm going to check right here. Now it's telling me I need to sign into my Microsoft account. But as you can see right here, we're on a local account and we are not signed into OneDrive or any of that stuff. We've not activated Windows. And if we go into the Windows Updates area, you'll see we're still enrolled, which is a good thing. But Microsoft are saying in 60 days time, if we're not signed in, it will stop sending security updates and you will be opted out of the ESU program until you sign back into your Microsoft account again. So we'll have to see how that pans out when it happens, because obviously we can't test that right now. Now, this is another question I see quite a bit where people are saying they're on Windows 10 and they've upgraded to Windows 11. Is it still possible to go back to Windows 10 once the end of life reaches for Windows 10? And the short answer to that is yes, as long as you still have this go back feature right here. If this is grayed out, you are going to have to do a clean install. You can still do a clean install of Windows 10. It will still activate and you will not receive any security updates after the deadline unless you enroll into the extended security updates program. You can do that at any time. The only problem with going back using this method is you will lose your apps and programs. So really, it's best to back your data up and just do a fresh install because at this stage, you only have 10 days to go back anyway unless you've extended that like I've showed in previous videos. So you'd have 10 days to roll back. After that period, you're going to have to do a clean install of Windows 10. You would then have to go through the uh, opt-in of the ESU to be able to continue to get a year's support for that. Remember what I said? You're not going to get a year from the date you enroll. It's from the date of end of life of Windows 10. And you can see we're rolling back to Windows 10 right here. Now, Microsoft have put tons of documentation out on the Internet explaining about the extended security updates program and what you'll need to do and all the criteria and everything else. It just seems that some people don't seem to want to search for this stuff. And you can even see how much does Windows 10 ESU cost tells you right here at no additional costs you just sync your pc settings if you live outside the eea it tells you about the redeeming of a thousand microsoft reward points and even says a one-off time payment of 30 dollars right here so why people email me and attack me in emails saying i'm not being clear it's all there for you to see i've linked to this sort of stuff in previous videos Another question I see is, will my PC stop working if I don't opt into the ESU program? The short answer to that is no. Your PC will be fully functional apart from you will not receive any technical assistance from Microsoft and you won't receive any security updates. If you look at this page right here, which I've shown in previous videos, it gives you all the information about what to expect once Windows 10 reaches end of life. You can see what does end of support mean? Uh, will my Windows 10 computer stop working? And they've gone through and answered all of your questions for you. And I've linked to this sort of stuff in previous videos as well. So I think we've pretty much covered everything we need to cover about the Windows 10 end of life and also the ESU program. Now, remember, there are still applications like Zero Patch which you can use to extend the life of Windows 10 even further after the end of life of Windows 10 ESU program. There's been also people saying they may extend even further after one year. That is possible that Microsoft could change their stance on it and extend even further than one year. But as it stands right now, Microsoft have clearly stated that it's a one year deal only. And that is it. Now, remember, we are talking about home editions of Windows 10 here. We're not talking about Windows 10 LTSC, which ends in 2027. And we're not talking about Windows 10 IoT LTSC, which ends in 2032. These are older versions of Windows 10, which are 21 H2. And that is the life expectancy for those. They are they are enterprise editions of Windows and you will need to subscribe to Microsoft and there's a bunch of old other stuff you have to go through to be able to officially legally get those and I've made videos on that explaining that topic as well. 
Now, quickly touch on about extending the life of your hardware beyond this. You can use a Linux operating system or you can use FlexOS or any of the other options out there available. There's tons of them to choose from if you need to use your PC for longer than one more year if Microsoft pulled a plug after one more year. You can also use Zero Patch as well to extend the life of your hardware and stay on Windows if you choose to do so. That's if Microsoft don't extend beyond one year. So like we've said before, it's not as bad as what people make out. This is nothing new. This has been happening for many, many years. Windows always reaches end of life and normally people will upgrade to the next version. Uh, you can either, like we said, upgrade to Windows 11 if you have an eligible PC. If you don't, then you're going to have to either use unsupported hardware, extending the ESU program, or you're going to have to change operating systems to, say, Linux or FlexOS and so on. Or you can use Zero Patch for the foreseeable future on there for as long as they support it. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it. Hopefully this video has answered all the questions that you may have. And again, if you're still having troubles and you haven't received the uh, ESU update yet, then unfortunately there's something going on with your system and you may need to think about doing a repair install to fix that problem. Otherwise, the time is ticking and you should have received it by now. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.